Hey guys, Clumsy here. Welcome back to Microsoft Flight Simulator. Very different flight today. As you can see in front, very different plane from the usual TBM that we fly. This is the Citation Longitude. And uh, there are a couple of mods that got released in the meantime and uh, that made me more confident to fly this plane. We are also in a very different area. We are actually in England, in London to be specific. We are starting off in London Gatwick, Eco Golf Kilo Kilo, and we'll be making our way to Manchester, Eco Golf Charlie Charlie, because I have a pretty cool looking handcrafted airport by Mako Simulations. That is the Manchester airport that we will be checking out, so that's going to be the destination. Thanks a lot to Max for reaching out to me and uh, giving me a copy of it. So we'll. Uh, Go through that in more detail later, I'll share more details, but first things first, let's start up the plane. And I, I won't be using any like pilot to ATC or VAT sim at the moment, so we can focus on the, the plane and the scenery. That's my excuse, but let me go, okay. And if I can remember how to do this, then maybe it will work better. Cause system test. Batteries okay. on. So the mod I'm using is from Darkfly0219. It's the Cessna Citation Longitude Flight Dynamics Modification. It's a, it's a handful. <laughs> it's a mouthful. But it improves the fuel economy, the overall flight dynamics of the longitude, makes it much more realistic. And of course I have the G3000 mod from Working Title, which apparently also works perfectly with the longitude, even though technically it has a G5000 installed. But yeah. No complaints here, right? So we have the plane enabled. Batteries are on. Anti-collision lights turn that on as well over there. And I think we'll need a bit of pushback here. Yeah, because that's the runway. Runway 26 right. And we'll be having, we'll be following uh, standard instrument departures. We'll try to do this as by the book as possible. And in order to do that, we'll need the help of this guy. Push us back a bit. So let's signal him over. Let's release the parking brake so he can push us back. And in the meantime, let me double check. I do have to change the altimeter here since we are in England. Might as well do it the proper way. So PFD settings. That one, hectopascals. Thanks to the G3000 mod that works. 1006 screen H. Okay, in terms of altitude, because we are following a, a departure procedure for departure, specifically the, what the, how do you read this? The LAM6 Victor departure. Let me show you the chart. So here's Navigraph. We'll be departing from runway 26. We'll be making a U turn. We have a lot of altitude and speed restrictions, max to 20. I'm not sure if I can follow all of that. We will do our best. But yeah, 4,000, uh, 5,000, lots of um, altitude ceilings here. And that's going to be very challenging, especially for this jet, because this aircraft is super powerful, especially during climb. So I really have to be mindful of that. Max is 220 knots. Okay, I'll, I'll take note of that later. Okay, there you go. Getting pushed back now, but now that we are starting off, I should be able to start off engine number two. If I can click it properly. Okay, that should work. I am hearing the engine now. Starting to spool up. Just like an airliner, huh? Push back and engine start. Man, I'm excited. I haven't flown in England for quite a while. Since we started the On Air Thunder series, I've been flying, flying in the US. And the landscape is so different. Even the map looks so different. So lush, so green. 
during the X-Plane 11 days, I've been flying a lot here in England because this is where the TBM 900 was situated in FS economy. But yeah, it's been a while and I kind of miss it. So as far as I know, London Gatwick is a default airport, I believe. Not too shabby. I mean, all the details are there. There's a tower. There are buildings at the back. Ground crew, some planes and ground. Nothing fancy, but it works. And I'd like to contrast this, compare this, how Manchester looks later as we arrive there. Switch to FMS. Engine 2 looks good. Let's go and start engine 1 as well. Sorry for the shakiness, guys. Blame track IR. I have not yet completely configured the instrument views here in this plane. Yeah, that that should be the view that I go to when I start the engine, I guess. Cool. Speed bugs, I will need that. Rotate. VR is 120 knots. Uh, I guess normally you would compute something here, but uh, this is far from study level, but this is flyable at least. So let's put that on the speed tape just so we have a visual on what our rotation speed is. Engine 1 is starting as well. Now in terms of altitude restriction based on the, the chart that I showed a while ago for the departure, the initial altitude restriction will be 4000. So let's limit ourselves there. Zoom in here a bit as well. Okay, let's hope I remember all of this. And we'll also switch to turn on the flight directors. Switch to nav mode. The target speed, let's do that, set that to manual. And then set it to maximum will be 220 knots. So let's set it to 210 knots. See the speed changing there. There you go. You have two good engines. That looks good. Let's go ahead and uh, get some light in the panel as well. Nav lights, taxi lights as we're going to get moving soon. Okay. Runway heading. Good question. Runway 26 right heading is 258. So let's put that here. 258 on the heading. Good. Release the parking brake. And off we go. I'm going to set a vertical speed of... Uh, hmm. Good question. Maybe let's set it like 1500. We don't need to climb that high, that fast. Actually, let's set it to 1000 feet per minute. Later on, when we enable autopilot, it will follow that. Because uh, if we are limited to 4000 feet during the departure, it probably will, will probably reach that limit very early on if we climb too fast. So lots of limitations. Hopefully the auto throttle will be good enough the auto throttle here it this plane does have an auto throttle but yeah it is a bit buggy so we'll have to be very mindful of that it's good left here and i love the sounds of this engine this plane the cj4 has jets uh, jet engines as well but uh, the sounds on this plane on the longitude is much better in my opinion much more lively and the glass cockpit, very familiar because it's almost the same as in the TBM, so not too alien looking. Okay, we can probably start off from here. Quebec. That should work. Okay, let's see. What else have I forgotten? I'm sure I've forgotten a lot. Take off flaps, landing lights, strobes. Turn off the taxi lights. The heater for the probe should be somewhere here. That one, Pito in static. All right. You have a displaced threshold here, so that's for takeoffs. 
but we probably won't need that much runway so I'll just start off here clear on the left clear on the right all right that is runway 26 right correct heading looking good okay I hope I didn't forget anything but we will do it as we go so let me enable the auto throttle here should push us forward off we go guys wish me luck I'll need it <laughs> good. remember 120 knots is the rotation speed okay V1 rotate 120 climb up ever so subtly there you go beautiful nice Positive rate gear up. Flaps up as well. And then let's go and enable the autopilot. Let's see how it will follow the restrictions that we have given it. Oh, pretty nice actually. Look at that. We limited it to 210 knots and it is slowing down to 210. And it is climbing at a thousand feet per minute so it is following nice okay that looks good so if we monitor this on the departure uh, i guess we could climb a bit steeper maybe two thousand feet per minute so what the plane will do is it will try and push forward the throttle since it's, it has control via the auto throttle and maintain that uh, climb of 2,000 feet per minute. Looks good. Yeah, so far so good. Max 220 knots, 31 DME from Ditling, VOR, 117.3. So let's go and plan that as well so that we have visual. 117.3, tune that in. There we go. You have Detling. There it is. 33 DME. 31 DME is the next waypoint. Alright. That looks good. So we have reached 4,000 feet. Max here is 220 knots. So we can actually increase the limit. 220 only? 220 only? Oh, it, it follows. Oh, beautiful auto throttle. Isn't this fancy, guys? Oh, it's the temperature right now. We are going into clouds. One degree Celsius outside. Not about sure, not sure about you guys, but I am enjoying the luxury, the feel of this. Right. Next waypoint is 29 DME. We can speed up up to 250 knots based on the chart. So let's do just that. Let's make it 245 so we have a bit of allowance in case the plane screws up. But right now, it's actually following pretty well. Beautiful. Look at that. So we made our U-turn. We are here now. 29 DME from Detling. Maximum 250 knots. Maximum ab um, should be staying below 4,000. Or below 4,000. And at Acorn, we should be exactly at 5,000 feet. So let's go and follow that. Because that is the next waypoint. So let's set the altitude here. 5000 VS. Let's hope that works. I found that VS works better with this plane. If you go FLC, it kind of gets confused. Because FLC mode, flight level change mode, normally with a, with a plane that doesn't have auto throttle, it controls your climb based on your airspeed. Right, so it pitches up and down to control the airspeed. But here in this plane, there is an additional factor. In addition to changing the pitch to change the speed, it can also change the thrust, the throttle to change the speed. So I guess that's confusing it a bit. And yeah, I'm not yet sure what it's really doing there. So we'll have to see. We'll also have to be very mindful. What is the transition altitude here? Um, 
we probably no transition altitude is 6,000 feet okay so we should remain at local QNH 1006 good we are keeping the I am impressed the automation actually works guys <laughs> I hope I'm making sense I'm just super excited and yes a lot of things are happening at the same time so hopefully you guys are keeping up and sorry if I'm being very blurry here but yeah this is fast becoming my favorite plane the longitude is one of the coolest planes out there arguably the coolest in flight simulator 2020 the most prestigious I heard in real life it costs like what 20 million USD <laughs> so it definitely is not a cheap plane as you can see from the how it looks as futuristic as it gets right all right we are at 5,000 feet at acorn that's perfect still maintaining maximum 250 knots that's okay the next waypoint and the acorn should be a waypoint on its own yeah that's the one in front and then the next one is 10.5 dme from detling that's okay i think that's pretty consistent yeah we basically keep this this speed and is this altitude until we cross that point this the dme 15 point here is it oscar yeah i think this one once we're past this we can go to 6000 feet and once we're past uh, lamborn the lamborn vor then we can climb higher but until then we're stuck at 6000 the good thing here is we can actually do a lot of sightseeing below the meantime i'm just not sure what we're looking at so you guys help me out okay i know we have a lot of viewers from the uk so hope you guys are enjoying this flight so far feel free to be my tour guide and correct me and give me additional info wow things are taking shape okay lots of clouds here very cloudy as you can expect from any british day <laughs> so i guess there is this is nothing out of the ordinary right i'm also very happy with the frame rate the fps here with the longitude is almost the same as it with the, as with the tbm and i guess that makes sense because the normal the things that slow you down the most are usually the the glass panels insist since it has essentially the same glass panels at the EBM then the frame rate hit is mostly the same which is not much comparing with other planes landing lights are still on everything I hope I'm not missing anything yaw damper this plane doesn't seem to have any yaw damper so I'm guessing that's turned on by default okay yeah let's keep that we are actually able to follow a proper departure procedure guys with the automation that is so cool that gives me a lot of confidence to to try vatsim next time 115 decimal six I, I guess i should use decimal here since we're in england right 115 decimal six would be lamborn let's also track that so we have visual on where that is let's put that on nav 2 115 decimal six transfer lamborn is captured that is reflecting their 19 dme that is where we're going next that is the end of the arrival and after we cross that vor then we can climb fully to our cruising altitude of 20,000 feet flight level 200 which is basically something i popped up i am not sure if it's accurate at all <laughs> so <laughs> we'll have to see if that makes sense maybe I, we can afford to go higher but it's okay we'll make it work and then because i don't have proper performance yet for this plane since i'm just started flying it a little nav map doesn't have information yet on this plane so we'll have to figure out how to determine when to uh, start descending so i guess we'll have to use the the, the top of descent calculation Thankfully, we have work on the G3000 mod, so I have the distance to go here, so we know exactly how many miles before we reach Manchester. 
including all the waypoints so this is uh, what do you call it track miles i think okay there you go so we've crossed uh, 15 dme from uh, uh oh now we're counting from lamborn yeah we crossed 15 dme from lamborn so we can actually climb to 6,000 feet now Yes, it. You know what? I'm actually not sure if in real life, the, in real life, this plane has the G5000, right? With how expensive it is, I would expect it should be able to handle all these restrictions, speed, altitude, automatically. And I guess that would make sense because you have the the FMS managed speed here, and you have the vertical. Uh, how do you call it? the vertical profile on the flight plan there so I'm guessing in real life you don't even need to flick on any of these manually like manually set the, the vertical speed manually set the altitude it should be able to pass through and respect all of those I would imagine okay Lamborn is nine miles away once, we're cro once we cross that, we are home free and we can climb all the way to flight level 200. Oh my goodness, this is beautiful. And as we start our climb, I can tell my stories. But so far, things are looking pretty good, keeping my fingers crossed. Now the tail number, I did not uh, change to the golf, the, the normal tail numbers here in England, in the UK. Normally you start with the G, right? G, dash, and then letters. Let's just assume that this is a plane that came from the US, flew all the way here, which is actually pretty realistic given that this plane has a distance of around 3,500 miles, if I remember correctly. Oh my goodness, these clouds look scary. Hopefully these are not violent. Hang tight, hopefully it doesn't cause any icing we'll monitor that negative one degree celsius here we have now entered imc zero visibility outside thankfully our avionics seems to be holding up so far keeping my fingers crossed where i am worried about later is during the approach ah beautiful yeah, the, the approach, setting the approach has always been buggy with the uh, autopilot in Asobo, so we'll see how we can make that work. We'll figure it out later. Right, Lamborn, come on. Yeah, we're, we're free, we're free, we're past Lamborn now. Okay, good. So let's go climb up all the way to 2,000 feet. I love seeing those clouds there. That is beautiful. And I hope this is as smooth as on your screen as it is on mine. Ah, oh, cloud surfing, guys. Wait a minute. Let's let's re let's remain at six thousand feet for a minute because this cloud surfing opportunity doesn't happen so often. <laughs> that looks so scenic. My goodness. Just taking photos left and right here. Right, I'm happy. Right, 20,000 feet life level 200. First thing we should do, I guess, is switch to standard QNH 1013. VS it up to 3,000 feet per minute. The plane should be able to handle that. So I'm not touching anything. The plane is controlling the thrust, the throttle on its own. 245 knots for a climb should be more than enough. So let's hear it push for us. Oh, it does feel like we're in a $20 million plane, huh? With how fancy things look and how fancy things are working. Man, that is beautiful. Hope you guys are enjoying this as much as I am. We haven't even arrived at the main event yet. Alright, so now that we're free of the clouds, we are free of the restrictions. We're just continuing our climb and uh, I can tell you more stories about the 
why we, this episode took place. So this episode is all thanks to Max from Maco Simulations. He actually reached out to me, told me that he was working on a Bayware Airport, Manchester, Echo Golf Charlie Charlie, where we are headed right now. And he asked if I wanted to check it out and if I wanted to feature it. 10,000 feet. Turn off the landing lights. It's good. You are hearing the throttle like oscillate a bit. Thrust and then pull back, thrust, pull back. So I'm not sure. Maybe that's just one of the weaknesses. Set it to 40 knots. That should be okay. And let's zoom out a bit here so we have visibility. So let's compute this a, fir a bit first before I tell more stories. Um, let's see, let's see. So when we get to Manchester, we'll need to be at 3,500 feet. Let's call it 3,000. So that means we need to lose around 17,000. So 17 times 3, that's 17, 34, 44, 51 miles. So that means when the distance to go is 51 miles, let's make it 55 miles. I should be starting my descent. That's the general uh, rule of thumb for calculating the top of descent. And I should do it at a like three degree pitch down attitude more or less there's a fancier way of computing the the airspeed you should be descending at but of course i forgot about it let's go to external view again anyway on with the story so max reached out to me and initially i was not too interested because uh, i mean I, I was flying in the u.s right so i was fully invested in the u.s in an on-air uh, career we had and we have a VA in the US so I was not too keen on checking out Manchester but I mean why not check it out so he gave me a copy and uh, I tried it out and my goodness I compared the default Manchester to the Manchester that he's working on and take note this is still work in progress this is still early access so what you're going to see later on will not be the final product. He's still adding more things on top of it. But even with the early access stuff, my goodness, it felt like the default airport was like... Uh, it felt like the default airport didn't finish loading properly. I forget what I mean. So it, it felt so raw. It felt so lacking in comparison with the... In comparison with the... Um, what do you call this? The the Manchester Airport from Max from Mac o Sims. So I was pretty happy to try it out. There were a couple of delays in between. No thanks to the recent FS2020 patch, which bored a lot of my plans. But here we are. It was a blessing in disguise because here we are flying to Manchester with a longitude, and uh, I think it all turned out for the best. Well, I, I can't I can't call that yet because uh, there's still plenty of things to do. But <laughs> there we go, reaching our cruising altitude. So now that I am there, we can actually push it, go as fast as we can. From what I heard, this is from the CJ4, but working title is working on the CJ4 mod, right? And I was watching their tutorial video on how to fly the CJ4. I would imagine some of those things apply to the longitude. And an interesting point they mentioned was if you wanted the uh, people who fly jets, people who have private jets like this one, they probably are not that concerned about saving money, right? I mean, they wouldn't buy this plane if they were trying to save money. So the main goal normally is to get to where you want to go as fast as possible. And so he said, normally when they fly, they would always fly close to the red tape, like the, the maximum, what, what kind of V that, the, that, that one. So they normally fly very close to that range, so almost always at full power. In our case, that at flight level 200, that's 320 knots. 
And uh, I guess that's kind of realistic, actually. So that will be a lot of fuel burn. That will not be economical, but it will take us where we need to go as soon as possible. And if you compute here, distance to go is 100 miles. ETA is 845 UTC. Wait a minute. I think that's wrong. I think that's the next waypoint. Um, yeah, I might have to change that. Yeah, there, there should be a different... You know what? I'll take you guys with me. How you set that up, that's possible to set up these things in the working title, in the G3000 mod. You go to Utilities, Set Up, Avionics Settings. And you see field 1, field 2, field 3. What I did was I changed the DTG, the distance to destination. Distance to go, I guess that means. And then the ETA, that might be bugged. Estimated time and route to destination. But yeah, you have so many different options here depending on what you want to track. I want to see how far or how long it would take us to get there. Yeah, ETA should be the one. That's because that's arrival, so maybe that's bug. Then root. T20. Hmm, interesting. I'm not so sure now. Now that I think about it, yeah, flight level 200 seems a bit too conservative. I could have flown higher. And we are far away from the top of descent here. But that's okay. That's okay. So yeah, I think this should be... Estimated time of arrival. But yeah, that looks bugged. Okay, fine. That's okay. Ah, things are looking so good here. That is beautiful. Wow. Okay, so I'll chill out here at flight level 200. I'll bring you guys back when there is some action. Oh, wait. Maybe I can share with you some stuff. Yeah, so some more details, more stories from the my interaction with Max. So I'm not a huge fan of payware airports because I'm just such a cheapskate, as you guys might know. So I don't normally buy airports. I'm pretty happy with the default ones, but my interaction with Max has been pretty pleasurable, pretty... Max is one of the most professional uh, people I've worked with so far, and I've worked with a couple of guys throughout my years here as a content creator. Uh, he has been very... like, how I deal with people in my full-time work as an IT consultant. He works like that. He's very courteous. He's very. He follows up, but he's not rude about it. He gives all the details that are necessary. He's very uh, straight to the point. So very professional to work with, and very courteous as well. And not only to me because he has a Discord server already. Uh, I think if you go to the page, there would be a Discord server link there to the page where you buy the airport. But I can also link it in the video description if I remember to. But yeah, based on the interactions there, I see that he's a very nice guy. And uh, he's very flexible. Yeah, so when we were working out details together, like, okay, so how do we show this? What do you want to see? He was not very picky. And actually, I was surprised because I was... Normally, when you get these like showcases, they would want you to like show every bit of it you know like show every part of it tour around the airport and stuff but he specifically told me i want it to be natural so just fly like normal and uh, arrive at the airport like normal and just show the beauty of the airport like as you would normally fly into any airport and there's like no special treatment basically so you what you see is what you get and that actually i, ad I admire him for that um, for that approach so I would not have thought he would like that so pretty cool pretty cool guy anyway we'll get to it later as we go as we reach the airport as we get closer but for now chill out I'll catch you guys in a bit 
when we get to more exciting stuff and yes the the approach the arrival will be quite interesting as well so i'll bring you guys back in a bit okay catch you soon look at that beautiful plane my goodness and the reflections right although there we might have a bit of a hiccup if we step inside the flight deck the cockpit <laughs> i might have forgotten a major major step if you have encountered this problem before then you probably know what i'm saying um so when you start up the plane please don't forget turn on the left and right generators because what happened there actually was probably our batteries died because we were not charging it with the generators <laughs> so yeah don't forget to turn on the generators right I, uh, my goodness okay so where are we oh wow that was so fast 57 miles okay we should be starting our descent already perfect timing actually look at this you can actually see the moon right there in front of us and the sun at the back beautiful perfect even the stars are aligning for us okay so how should we do this um hmm. let me see so 55 miles that's actually good already yeah let's do this so altitude let's move it to 3500 let's go in vs down let's say 2000 feet per minute i love the sound of those knobs Okay, please hold. Lower the speed. Let's maybe descend that, I don't know, 270 knots. Also, in case you're not able to make the auto throttle work or set the speed like this, make sure that you are in manual or is it manage? No, manual mode on the speed there. Not FMS, okay? That one. Because FMS doesn't work right now. There's no VNAV. Set it at 270 Landing knots. That's one of the bugs as well, I guess. The auto throttle when it goes to idle, it just says landing gear, landing gear. Okay, so let's get into more details on Manchester. Uh, Manchester Airport is currently in early access from Maco simulations I'll leave a link in the video description you should also be getting a voucher for the discount so when you if you decide to purchase there will be a discount although take note this discount will only apply once the airport is out of early access so right now as I mentioned it's still in early access and right now it costs 799 pounds okay when when it's out of early access when version 1 comes out at the full release it's going to be 999 so it will become more expensive but if you wait for that full release and apply the coupon that i'll be putting in the video description then you'll get a discount again now, i'm not sure how much that will be i'll try to put more details in the video description because right now i don't have it yet if I try to put more details there when I get it but yeah you can wait for the full release and then apply the coupon code so you get a discount otherwise you can buy the early access now but the coupon code will not work I guess I think that's how Max told me how that works okay so we'll go through the details of this airport in a bit as we're starting our descent here in terms of the Boeing banana, the range to altitude indicator, that looks pretty good. Dane at uh, 3,500 feet, that actually looks pretty steep. Let me see. Yeah, we don't really need to descend that fast. 1,500 should be good. And uh, yeah, let's slow down a bit more because we are reaching 10,000 feet here. And we can't go beyond 250 knots at 10,000 feet. 
So let's slow to around 260 knots. Slow it down bit by bit. I love that I don't have to touch my throttles at all. It's working perfectly so far, keeping my fingers crossed. <laughs> all right. We are approaching uh, the Trent VOR 115.7. Let's plug that in here. 105 decimal 7. Right. Trent, that's the one. Should be 60 ME from here, 6 miles from there. Yeah, that's the next waypoint. Then Dane would be the last waypoint before the approach. But we actually have not plugged in an approach yet, and that's what I'm nervous about. One sec, huh? let me just check. Transition level is by ATC. Hmm, they didn't really say what the transition level is. And we don't have ATC, so we don't have guidance for it. It's, let's say it's 6,000 feet also. So we switch to local QNH when we reach 6,000 feet. Alright, speed, slow it down to maybe 245 knots again. Let's follow that and this is a nice approach that we're doing because this approach is I think you would call it a procedure turn so this is the one so we're on the arrival right now which is pretty straightforward just a couple of waypoints and VORs no real restrictions there then would be the end of that arrival and then we would transition to the approach for uh, runway 23 right ILS approach runway 23 right and we would uh, do the full procedure turn starting in Manchester VOR, that's the initial approach fix. So we will actually be flying over the airport at 3,500 feet, which is perfect because we want to tour it, right? We want to go and uh, see how the airport looks like from above. But then as we reach Manchester VOR, we'll be turning right over here. And at 12 DME from India November and November, here the ILS frequency will turn left for 60 seconds, I believe. And then we'll uh, do a 180 it's on the 187 track, and then we'll intercept the localizer there. And then we'll do the usual approach for the ILS. So that will give us a lot of time to explore the airport, I hope. This kind of approach is very famous, very uh, very common in Europe from what I've noticed. I remember the last time I was flying in France, I also encountered this turn and you guys taught me about that procedure turn. It's quite interesting. Okay, so uh, next waypoint is Dane now. What I would like to do here is go into heading mode. One second because I'll need to alter the flight plan a bit. I hope the sim doesn't crash. Keep your fingers crossed. Let's slow down to 230 knots so I have more allowance. Okay. So what I'll do is I will go to the flight plan. I will... Uh, let's see. Okay. Normally we shouldn't do this. We didn't need to do this normally. So let's add an en route waypoint of Manchester. That will be the initial approach fix. That's the one. Is the plane doing okay? Nothing. That's good. And then I'll remove the arrival. Good. Alright, so now we're headed straight for Manchester. And then I'll choose the approach, which is ILS 23 right with the Manchester transition. Load that. Okay, that looks good. That looks good. So now we can go to nav mode. So the plane will follow the track direct Manchester. And uh, looks like that's going to be pretty good. Yeah, so we'll be arriving at Manchester, turning right, and then doing that procedure turn, and then going back. Okay, that procedure turn, I doubt that the autopilot can handle it, so we'll probably switch to heading mode then. But aside from that, things are looking pretty good. And sorry for the long video, guys. Yeah, it might be a longer video than usual. 
even more so than usual, but really enjoying this. Okay, 6,000 feet. We are getting there. I'm looking at little nav map right now. Uh, QNH is uh, niner, niner, niner. niner. Oh, interesting. Low pressure. Okay, so let's switch. Niner, niner, niner. There you go. Let's also apply that here. Oh, there's no other unit here. Um, niner, niner, niner is equivalent to 2950. Wow, that's really low pressure. In Manchester. Good. Are we climbing? Yeah, you guys notice the altitude suddenly changes? It's weird. Punching through clouds here, my most favorite part. Well, that looks beautiful, doesn't it? Oh crap, uh, icing. Okay, anti-ice is on. Good, alright. I was hoping we wouldn't need anti-ice. Alright, let's look at the procedure turn. Any restrictions here? The only restriction I see is maximum of 185 knots on the procedure turn itself. So for now, we'll keep 230 knots. Maybe we can slow down to 200 knots, huh? Okay. Landing gear. We can actually go and put one notch of flaps in. I think the safe extension is 250 knots for the flaps first notch and 230 for the landing gear oh, we should be well within that two hundred knots there you go oh it's a bit of a shame though my goodness a party pooper because we are at three thousand five hundred feet but I cannot see anything. So we're in the thick of clouds here. When, one second. Ah, uh, yeah, we do have broken clouds at 3,800. Can you guys forgive me for going off procedure for a bit for the sake of sightseeing? Instead of 3,500, we'll be going 3,000, okay? Sorry about this, but sightseeing is priority. Good. Angle of attack is good, alright, so I can keep this speed in. No, I don't think there are any possible vertical constraints there. There we go, we're starting to see the land. I think I can actually go 2500. So we can completely get rid of this these clouds. I'm pretty impressed though. The, the meta for this one from NOAA, it's saying 3,800 feet broken. And uh, it's not too far away from that, is it? Right. So that's Manchester up ahead, supposedly. So yeah, we're going off book here, guys. But there it is. From afar. Pretty foggy. Go 2000. Don't do this at home. Yeah, this is probably not safe because we'll be going the exact route that the other planes are arriving at. So, uh, this is prone for collision. So, uh, not very realistic at all, but for the sake of sightseeing, I'll do it. There you go. Manchester by Mako Simulations coming up ahead. And you can start to see the detail already. Comparing this one from the default airport that we've seen, I think it even has like a, I love Manchester there. It's still blurred here, but once we get closer, I saw that that has like an I and then a heart and then MCT. I love Manchester. Oh, look at that view! Beautiful! Wow! Okay. So we're doing the procedure turn now. That looks good. 
Alright, let's follow this to the T. Mm, and let me double check that I have my frequencies properly set. Uh, 109.5 should be the... 109.5 is the ILS frequency, 109 decimals, 5. I'll uh, never get used to that. And then the NAV2 should be the VOR for additional guidance. VOR, Manchester VOR, 1 on 3 decimal, 55. Yes, we have both correct identifiers there, perfect. And if you look at the heading, yes, indeed. So what we'll be using is the ILS DME. That's the main thing. Good. Wow, the clouds are getting really low. Huh? But I guess this is pretty familiar sight for you guys who live here. <laughs> this is nothing new, I imagine. Okay, slow down to no. Let's let's keep the speed. Let's keep the speed. You can see the glide slope is getting captured there already. While we are seeing it, and where we are where we are at right now, 10 dme. So the final approach fix is actually 10 dme from the localizer. We're not there yet. But soon. Soon dm. <laughs> Alright, so this is where we are at at the moment if I show the chart. That's the one. So we're making our way back. We should be ideally 3500 but for weather reasons forgive me for that um, temperature is 4 degrees outside I guess we can turn off the anti-ice for the other stuff I hope they don't get back pretty cold these days huh winter is coming unfortunately I can't say the same for me as I live in Singapore <laughs> all right so what to do, what to do, um, let's match the heading bug, there you go, that's our current heading, let's switch to heading mode, because I'll turn left in a bit, once we reach um, 12 DME, 12 miles from the localizer, we'll turn left, so I'll probably do that earlier, you know what, no, let's wait for 12, 11.1, 11.2, and that's going, going, going. Thankfully, no mountains in front of us. Things look like they are coming closer though, so that's getting pretty scary. Maybe we should continue climbing. Alright, 12 DME. Right, let's turn left to 007. And then we'll start the timer. Now, where is the timer? There's a timer here. Okay, I'll start that later. A bit. Once we reach 007. Now the autopilot currently in this version of the sim is not very accurate. It will slow down once we get close to 007 and it will not really touch that. So yeah, let me start the timer already. One minute and then we make our turn. Yeah, that's the definitely wrong altitude, right? Super low. Okay. So we slow down as well to 185 knots as indicated in the chart. One eighty five, there you go. Okay. Thirty seconds. Oh, that's getting too close for comfort, that hill right there. Looks very good for sightseeing. <laughs> Probably not recommended thank goodness we have synthetic vision at 48 seconds 50 seconds okay almost there Whoa, what what happened to the altitude suddenly changed what the heck's happening there maybe the pressure suddenly changed I don't know all right there you go one minute, start our turn to 187 degrees. Right turn to 187, and then we'll be intercepting the localizer. It's pretty good so far. 
what is the final approach fix is actually 3500 so maybe it's better if we climb that high again I mean we're not sightseeing anymore are we yeah let's do that we do have flaps though probably not ideal but the plane should be able to manage good Alright, looking good. Final approach course is 232. The localizer disappeared. I think we might be a bit too far away from it. So I'm still in heading mode here. Let me double check that the frequency was not changed by the sim. 109.5, yeah, that's correct. Yeah, there's the localizer. Okay, go to nav mode intercept that there we go okay and now we are getting close to the final approach fix keeping 3500 here yeah look at that suddenly changing right that's weird I guess that's the transition from the like the meet you blue weather versus the airport metar. So the, the, the pressure changes significantly. Maybe. Probably. So weird. I guess a few tweaks needed there. Okay, so let's... Uh, we should be seeing the glide slope soon. Well, we're still 14 miles away from the localizer. Final approach fix is 10 miles away. So that's okay. No worries there. The winds are... Not consistent with what I see in the metar. Did it change? No, it should be perfect. This approach should be perfect. Maybe the weather will change later. There's the glide slope. And as we get closer, that should be good. Deploy my landing gear. Wait for the, <coughs> the sign to say indicating gear down. There you go. Looks good. And once we're on short final, I will uh, go to full flaps. Now, and I should not forget to go into approach mode there. So we should capture the glide slope on that once that goes in the middle. And it's perfect that we're doing this ILS approach because it is the visibility. It's very bad right now. There we go, glide slope has been captured. All right, we are established. Now the missed approach procedure here is climbing to 3,500 straight on and then turning right uh, onto track 357. Okay, good, that's okay. Keep that as is. Now our approach speed is the very tricky thing here. I'm not really sure. What it says in the speed, the ref speeds, is 135. That's, I guess, for a full load, but I, I, for us, I'll set it to 120. For now. Do you guys see the runway? I don't see the approach lights yet. do it at 125 yeah 125 should be good and yeah, because if you look here we're still doing this the oh, the minimums are we beyond it already minimums for this one would be 449 not quite there yet okay good full flaps here because the angle of attack is not very good for this flap setting 
so speed bugs if you look here vref and vapp 135 i think that's too high there it is manchester straight ahead good so let me load the airport chart here this is how it looks like we'll be coming from 23 right and i guess we could exit at foxtrot or papa here now i think for business jets this one to the right of terminal 3 is where we go but i think that's work in progress still so we'll just explore the airport here and then stop somewhere nearby just explore the area a bit yeah anyway there you go right on the glide slope i'm happy to see that the puppy lights have been fixed as well the earlier version of this flight uh, of this uh, uh, airport the uh, puppy lights were uh, bugged they were always white okay good now i think we can handle this on our own to pilot this off now we'll do the giphy that's the giphy checklist work here not really we don't have inertial separator we don't have your damper fine okay winds are coming from the right so a bit of crosswind here and uh, guys let me just put a disclaimer okay I'm not an expert on this plane <laughs> just making that clear oh crap there you go auto throttle it should also turn off manually I wondered why my speed was not changing okay slow down to one two five knots Maybe pitch up so we don't descend that fast. Five hundred. The angle of attack is not very friendly looking. Oh crap, I was not in full flaps yet. Apparently there are three notches of flaps, not two. My bad. That should work better. Okay. Alright. That looks good. That looks more stable. Airport on the right. I'll focus on the landing, guys, but you guys can explore the airport on the right, okay? Look at all the details there. And compare that with how a typical default airport usually looks like. The winds have changed as well, if you guys notice. Also, you can see the bumps on the runway. I've heard that that is realistic, as in real life. There are actually quite small bumps there. Come on, bound, floating a little, but there we go. Uh, nice. Right, speed brakes. Deploy them. And we can exit here at Papa. Supposedly. Nice. Not too shabby, I'll take it. Actually, this is not Papa, we've crossed it already. This is Bravo Delta taxiway, which is fine. High speed. Taxiway there, okay. Landing lights off, taxi lights on. Turn off the strobes, nav lights, let's keep that on. And let's turn right here into the heart of the airport and explore a little find a suitable parking area for us oh, there's actually a longitude as well there no there's a cj4 fancy maybe we can park beside him cool well we made it in one piece <laughs> i'm happy enough with that that landing was a bit floaty but overall it was good the approach was not the most stable but i'll take it work in progress we are constantly learning and yeah look at the frame rate here not too shabby right not that much different from when we were in uh, gatwick and that's with all these details added already let's get closer to one of these terminals i believe this is terminal 3 right in front of us is pier b this is terminal 3 
couple of part planes in there. I look forward to the day when we get the real liveries for the AI planes. But yeah, but right now I actually have even the let's turn off the heater for the Pito and static so it doesn't overheat. Yeah, right now I don't even have any AI enabled because it really slows down my system. It takes a lot of huge toll on the CPU. And I would rather get consistent frame rate than a couple of random planes flying. Right. Let's go and park here. But uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed that flight. Let me know what you think. Yeah, leave some useful links in the video's description. Thanks again, Max, for uh, giving me a copy of this airport. Manchester looks beautiful. Even some custom hangars in there, I believe. Pretty interesting stuff. Now, I'm not really familiar with this place, so you guys would know better. So let me know what you think, okay? Taxi lights, nav lights can go off and... Uh, over here, we can probably start turning off the engine. There you go. Turn off the generator. <laughs> Turn off the batteries. Ah, that's good enough. Man, that is one good looking plane, isn't it? Beautiful. Hope you enjoyed that flight guys, I can't say it's short, because it took more than an hour. But hope you enjoyed nonetheless and look forward to your comments as always. Thanks for watching, have a nice day, clumsy flying everybody and uh, catch you in the next one. Bye bye, catch you soon.